Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with Match Quarters, bringing you another edition of Match Quarters Quick Hits. Today we're going to be talking about what is a blitz and what is a pressure and what is the difference. Because you have to define them and it also affects how you use pass distribution and who you're also sending. So, let's talk about a pressure first. A pressure is a five-man pressure. So, if you're a three-down team and you're watching this, if you send four, if you send four, so you send an outside linebacker, or you send the mic or the wheel, you really are only creating a movement. That is, that is a four-down movement. You're moving somebody on the line, or you're inserting somebody. You can consider it a pressure, but it doesn't affect pass distribution. You still are going to have a low-hole player in the mic, and you're going to have two overhangs. You're going to have two corners, and you're going to have two safeties. So it really doesn't affect your structure passing-wise. When, when we're talking about a four down and we're talking about a pressure, we're talking about five man pressure. So your pass distribution in a five man pressure is going to only change to the blitz side. So let's say right here, I've got a Sam linebacker. I'm going to send him on an edge blitz. He's gone. I have to now account for the fact that my overhang is gone. So because I don't have an overhang and I've lost my cover down, I now have to decide what am I going to do to the front side or the blitz side. So here we have the blitz side, and here we have the front side. Okay. Now, offenses are going to attack you in, in two different ways, meaning that you're going to also have to have two different coverages. You can't just have blanket coverage. If I'm sending a five-man pressure, there's no reason to turn it into a fire zone. I don't need to spin to single high. The reason that this is, is my Mike linebacker is still going to relate to the number three receiver. And in fact, by sending him, uh, and let's say I'm doing a simple edge blitz, the Mike linebacker now doesn't have a gap. So he now can actually work with the number three receiver if the number three receiver decides to flare or run a flat route. So you're, you have actually kept distribution the exact same. So to the front side, away from the blitz, you can keep your you can keep your three on one. So right here I have one, two, three. So whatever I call goes. I don't have to change it. And in fact, the down safety doesn't have to work to the middle of the field. Now, where it gets tricky is to the blitz side. So you have two options to the blitz side. Knowing that the mic is going to push with the three, I've got to find a way to get a two on two advantage. Now Right then and there, I've created a one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's not something that I want. If I get two verticals, I'm gonna have to keep two. I'm gonna have to keep it and carry what I've what I've got. So there, you have two options. You have what's called over and under. Now, under is gonna be most people's first option. This is kind of a pseudo cover three coverage. In fact, it is. It's a robber coverage. So in under, the safety is going to tell the corner, hey, I'm going to be underneath, you're going to be over top. So instead of being at his base alignment at 10, as he works down, he's going to give the illusion that they're going to spend a single high and work down to 8. It's going to be a flat foot, hot foot read. All that means is as he's walking down, he's going to get a nice alignment and he's just going to fire his feet at the, at the snap of the ball. He is your curl flat player. He's going to work back, and he then is going to apex the unit. This is your unit. Hey, he is over top of one and two and under coverage. They are relating and matching off the receivers. They're both reading two, two to one. Now, this is where it comes in. If offenses are using hot routes, so slants, hitches, to counteract your blitz, then this is the coverage you want because most likely the hot route receiver is going to be where the overhang is coming from. This is your hot receiver. So he's most likely going to run a slant. The best coverage to do that would be some sort of a robber coverage where he's robbing the curl. So as he goes on a slant route, I've got him moving down. He now attacks the slant route. Now we have affected the hot route. He runs a hitch route and sits at five. I'm now coming down right on top of him to counteract the hitch route. So under is good if you have hot routes. So if you're seeing hot routes by the offense, over is good against RPO teams. Now, let's talk about over. Over is going to be the opposite of under. I still have the same problem with distribution. What am I going to do with these two receivers? I have two on two. So instead of being in a quarters alignment, he now is going to be in a cloud alignment. 
He's going to be in a trap alignment. He's going to line up at five outside shade, and he's reading this. Now, RPOs, what are we getting? We're mostly getting bubbles. We may even get an out route by, the, by them, or we're getting some sort of a hit screen. This is where you want to have over. Over tells the safety, I'm now going to be over top. I'm now going to sit on top. Now, this is different than Cloud. He is not going to fast bail. I don't need him bailing out if I know I'm going to get a quick throw. So if I'm going to get a quick throw or a screen, I want him coming off and stepping off just as he would in quarters, and he's going to do it from 10 yards. So he's not even going to move. The distribution is going to look exactly the same. The only person that's going to move is your Sam, and your Mike might plus a little bit. So he's going to get a step off. He is actually in trap coverage. He's looking for anything. If he gets a bubble, he goes now. He's going to go hard right now. Cover safety then is going to work over the top of number one in case I get a screen and go. So in a pressure, I don't have to change anything. I now have coverage on both sides of the ball. Now let's talk about what a blitz is. So if I have a blitz, a blitz is now going to send six or more people. So now the, the distribution is going to change. Now the most famous way to do blitzes is going to be from a fire zone. So if I have this, this is my fire zone. I've got these guys going. I'm going to send him off the edge. Now I've sent six. What am I going to do? Now the, what you have to do is two things. You either have to spin a single high because not only are you losing your overhang, but you're also losing your number three player. Meaning your will linebacker is either going to have to relate to two, depending on where you spin. Now, most people are going to spin where they're sending the blitz. So now you've created an overhang. He's going to have to be deep. He's going to work to the middle of the field. He's going to have to work to the low hole. He's got to be your number three player. Now, the problem with this, actually he's going to be your overhang. He's going to stay right here. The problem with this is you're either going to have to sink him here and sink him here. But I argue, why drop somebody that never covers? Now the issue with this is if I drop him here or I drop him here, I am now putting him uh, in a position to not be successful. Most defensive linemen aren't great in coverage. So why not go ahead and send the extra guy and wall off and wall off here and carry anything that goes into the middle. The issue you find is if I get a flare wrap. What I would suggest is anytime you send is six, go ahead and send seven. Make it a man blitz. If you're running quarters coverage, a man blitz actually works with the structure of your defense. So you could even do something like this. Go ahead and send him. He's going to work down. He's going to work down. Your edge blitzer then would peel with that. You keep static. They don't know you're blitzing. Now, the best part about this is that you can now work a bluff game. So they, the offense now doesn't know if you're actually blitzing. And or if you're bluffing and you're just gonna you're gonna disperse at the snap of the ball. So man actually fits better with blitzing, whereas pressures you don't have to change your coverage. You're only losing one person. Mike's already gonna going to push with the number three receiver, so you might as well keep pass distribution to the front side away from the blitz the same and uh, use an over or under scheme to the blitz side. When you're blitzing six, if you're going to have to go to a fire zone, I would suggest doing the fire zone where you have three over two, those overhang players, so in this case it would be the wheel on the cover safety, they need to hold the edge and not allow anything in the middle, and the down safety tops everything with your corners sinking to make sure nothing gets over top of them. So again, we talked about what's the difference between a blitz and a pressure. If you're a three down team, if you're only sending one person, you're really putting yourself into a situation where you become a four three. So your coverage distribution really doesn't change. You just lose that extra guy in coverage. So thank you again for uh, watching Quick Hits. You can find me at matchquarters.com or you can also follow me on Twitter with a Twitter handle at the underscore coach underscore A. Thank you.